I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of your first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you earned doubled. All the cash back from eating at your favorite soup dumpling restaurant doubled. All the cash back from that trip where you sort of learned how to snowboard also doubled. And the best part, you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it. Nope. Discover does it automatically. Seriously, though, see the terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com slash match. This episode is brought to you by AMC's Better Call Saul. Nominated for seven Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Drama Series, Outstanding Lead Actor for Bob Odenkirk, and Outstanding Supporting Actress for Ray Seahorn, The New York Times calls Better Call Saul one of the best-made shows on TV. Episodes are available to Television Academy members at amcfyc.com and on the AMCFYC app. Hello, gorgeous. Welcome back to the Give Them Lala podcast. Whether you're listening or watching now, what's up? It's sad. Today, Easton is in Utah. I know. I hate it. It feels, it used to be just us two. And now without Easton, it feels not good. It feels like It feels a little weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's sad, like sadder for us or sadder for him. (laughs) That like we're doing this without him or he's in Utah. Probably sadder for us. I talked to him. He, I was like, do you miss it? He was like, no. The podcast I, or Miss no, no, LA? No, that Miss, like, Miss Utah. Do you miss being there? Like, you're there. You you get to go home. And he's like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like home. When your family, like my mama says, the home is where the heart is. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. And we're all out here now. Yeah. So he will be missed today. He comes back tonight, which is great. We record on Mondays. Mondays are always a jam-packed day. But... I'm super, super excited because we are doing our live show at the Irvine Improv. Yeah. We only had one date at first. It was October 17th. You guys are so savage that we sold out very quickly. It's a super important show for me because I will be approaching five years of sobriety. So it's like that celebration. And I want you guys to come. So I added another date on October 18th. And you can literally, the link is like right here on this page if you're watching. So just like click it, buy the tickets, come celebrate again one day at a time. But I have a solid feeling that we will make it to five years of sobriety. Five years is huge. It's pretty freaking huge. Every year is huge. Every day is huge. But five years is gigantic. Five years is gigantic. It's like the you go, the first year is huge. The next big one is five, you know. But I also am obsessed with like numbers and doing like one and then five, 10, 15, 20. You guys know the drill. Jessica, how are you doing today? I'm so good. I'm 32. So this is fun. How, how does it feel? It feels good. I said on last week's episode that it felt weird and I didn't know how I felt turning 32, but I, it feels fine. It's it an ugly fine. number, but it's fine. Cuter than 31, as we talked about last week. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited to hear about. <laughs> I'm saving it. Yeah. <laughs> Your birthday. You guys, I'm saving it for the ache and relief section. I was, and I haven't told Lala. It's, it's a thing. The birthday was on Saturday. I was so bummed because I really thought that I would be able to, like, make it to your birthday. We film on Saturdays. And then I got my call sheet, which actually comes to you, too, of, like, where I need to be. And I was gone from 10 a.m., you guys, to literally 10 o'clock at night. That that's, was like the longest filming day I've had in many years. Mm-hmm. The so, most packed. I've, that's the most packed I've seen your, your schedule for filming. Ever. Well, I'm so excited to hear <laughs> about your ache and relief. Okay. I want to talk. Every time I ask my, my people, like, what do you love talking about on this pod? And everyone always says ocean. Now, it is a bummer because... I don't think people really get to see me as a mom. So really, it's just stories. I want to get Ocean on the pod just to like say what's up real quick. Um, So we're going to definitely do that one day. Thank God. Yeah. People Ocean need- and Lisa. Like, Ocean- come on. Those are the guests. <laughs> we need them. <laughs> like- they're both stars. So I was with Ocean in her room the other day and we were like doing our bedtime routine. Everyone knows I'm obsessed with a good routine and I'm trying to have Ocean know her routine as well because I read online that the most important time of a child's day is the first three minutes after they wake up, the first three minutes after they come home from school, 
Ocean's not in school yet, so maybe after nap time. Mm -hmm. And then the first three minutes before they go to bed. Those are the most important minutes of the day for a child. Wow. So we do our whole thing. We read the book. We say our prayers. She knows the drill. But during this time of getting her in her PJs, she comes up to me and holds my face in her hands and says, Mama's so cute. I keep you? <laughs> and I was like, yes, you get to keep me forever. And she goes, okay. Comes back to me, holds my face again, puts it on the forehead, and she goes, I love mama. I keep you. And I said, yes, baby, you keep mama. And she says, and sealed with a kiss, kisses me on the lips and goes, true love. <laughs> I go, Ocean, she's, she's two and a half, y'all. Maybe a little over two and a half. I'm bad with math, <laughs> but a little <laughs> over two and a half. And I'm like, Ocean, where did you learn that? And she told me she learned it on Frozen from Elsa. True love's kiss. Is, it, is that real? Yeah. I mean, True. it's part of every Disney movie. Right. It's like, <laughs> sealed with a kiss. But I'm like, I remember that being sisterly love. Do they seal it with a kiss? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> she is, and I say this every time, but every time I see her or hear her, she's a genius. Yeah. She's an angel. Yes. She's a comedian. Correct. And she's an entertainer. She's, a, she's going to be a star. She's a star already. She's already a star. She's got main character energy. And what's hard for me, and you'll get this when you're a parent, right? Like, I look at Ocean, and I'm like, there's, there, she's developing her personality, right? She's communicating. I take her to the pool. I take her to the pool often, and she always wants to kick it with, like, other kids. Like, she's very, very social. And there were these two little shits. <laughs> And I'm only saying this because of what happened, all right? It's a brother and a sister at the pool. Ocean wanted to play with them. So I said, okay, baby, go, go swim with them. And she was a little nervous. She kept telling me to come with her. And I said, you're a big girl. Just go and start playing with them. Ask them what their names are. So she toddles over with her little life jacket on, gets in the pool. I can tell they're like assholes. Okay. They're mean. I don't like them. Sister and a brother. So I go over and get in the pool with her and we're swimming, whatever. And she's looking over. She clearly wants to participate in little kid fun that they're doing, you know, splashing around. So she swims over to them and says, um, come jump, come jump, come, come. And she walks up the stairs to go to the edge. And I watch the little girl look at her little brother. She goes like this. They both go underwater, and swim far away from her, like, no. so that she doesn't know. When I tell you the level, like, I'm definitely getting arrested when <laughs> Ocean goes to pre-K. Because if any, like, these kids are so freaking mean. And in that moment, I was like, I am giving my child a sibling. Yeah. Like, ASAP. Did you say anything to the kids? Where was the parent? The mom was reading a book. And, like, I didn't, I just, like, I didn't want that smoke. You know, we're filming right now. I get the smoke often. I just didn't want to deal. It was like, I'll play with my kid. But like you two, if your mama wasn't here, oh, oh, no. it's on. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Not with the kids. <laughs> Leave the kids out of it. Hey, no. <laughs> you're mean to my kid. Fair game. Did, did, because Gigi was there, right? Gigi was there. And Gigi didn't say anything. I, I was actively telling my mom, bite your tongue. Okay. Okay. You know, they were about to see Vanderpump Rules Lala real <laughs> fucking quick. <laughs> no. I, I was so upset about it. Just like I actively had to like stop myself from crying. Did it affect Ocean though? Or does she not really notice when people are mean just yet? She didn't see them swim away or anything and you, you know, distract or whatever. We got out of the pool and she wanted to go back and play with them again. So I said, we're going to go eat cookies. Remember, mom promised you cookies. I was like, that will distract you. But I'm like, you're not. And I also don't want to say to my child, they don't want to play with you. Like, because what I would never want to feel like she's unwanted by anybody. You're a star and anyone who gets to hang out with you is a lucky, lucky, you know, yes. they're lost. <laughs> little assholes <laughs> i was so angry about it anyway little shits. little shits we went back devoured milano's cookies love it watched you know all the music videos in the world 
She loves taking the dogs out to go potty. It's like she's such a goer, you guys. She and I'm is. not a goer. <laughs> I would sit on my ass all the live long day if I could. Yes, I hear you. I, I hear you. I think you are a goer just because you work so much. But like when you have the opportunity to relax. Gigi's a goer. Gigi's a goer. And it's like the littlest things. They're like, I'll go take the dogs out. Yeah. I'll go do this. And it's like little things where I'm like, no, <laughs> no. I'd rather not. There's like so many new housewives to watch. Right. Like who wants to do that? So she always wants to go down to take the dogs. And this at this time, she wanted mom to come with her and Gigi to take the dogs out to go potty. Bella goes out, who's like 100. <laughs> okay. She's like my mom's little Pomeranian. And she's literally, I feel like I have friends in this camera. I love, I know. I love that Sorry. you're looking at the camera. No, you do have friends. No, I know. Anyone I feel watching like they're you. all here. Yes. <laughs> We're all just like <laughs> hanging out. My mom's Pomeranian who's 15 and she's going blind. She's and- a toothpick. She's <laughs> toothpicks with fur. Yeah. Okay. It's like a supermodel, right? <laughs> she's got these long... She does not look like a Pomeranian to me, but we shave her like a lion and she's like kind of going deaf as well. But she goes potty and Ocean's very into thumbs up right now. She was like this. <laughs> so she, Bella goes potty and she goes, good job, baby, s- sweet baby Bella. And she's like this in her face. Th- thumbs up. <laughs> like, Wait, I love it. Give one, give one to the, your friends. We do it all the time. She loves that face. <laughs> I can't. That's so I can't cute. Breathe. Oh my god. She is a star. So we do that. We come back because again, my child in my eyes was just traumatized by these little bullies, right? <laughs> yes. So mean. So I let her stay up a little bit later. My daughter is obsessed with music videos. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's very into. So as you know, Swifties in town. Right. Taylor Swift. Yep. I'm not a huge fan of Taylor Swift. Well, I wasn't. Not because I just didn't like her or her music, her music hits. I just didn't ever really listen to her music. My daughter is a proud Swifty, and I am so thrilled about it. She is? It's because I haven't seen the Swifty side of her. I've seen the Elton John side. I've seen the pink side. What does she like? She has become obsessed with Taylor Swift, and I'm so happy about it. And I think because Ocean continues to watch her music videos, I'm like, damn, this song's a banger. She has so many bangers. Do you see the parents? This is the cutest thing. Going to the concerts with their, this is going to be you next year, with their little ones who are like diehard, screaming and crying Taylor Swift fans. And they have the t-shirts that say like, I'm a Swifty mom, I'm a Swifty dad. There's, it's cute. I have chills as you talk about it right now. So cute. So LA is utter chaos right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Swift's in town. I mean, I walked over to the Grove the other day. I was like, why are there so many tourists? Everyone there with their Taylor Swift merch on. So I was invited to this concert. And I declined because I was like, it sounds fun, but like this should go to someone who's like a diehard, right? Like, I don't want to take up a spot for someone who like really loves Taylor Swift. Right. And now I'm feeling like I have I have FOMO that I didn't go. I am so sad that you declined it because I think you would have had a blast. It's a whole production. It's not just a concert. It's like a it's like a it's a thing. I don't even know what to call it. production. Well, did you see that she gave like, I think it was between 50 and 55 million dollars in bonuses to like, I, I it was like drivers, just anyone a part of the production team for this tour. A queen of our time. No. So clearly I've been obsessing and talking about her often because yeah. she's all over my algorithm now. <laughs> it's all Taylor Swift. You should see my saved area of just all of these words of wisdom that she spews. I'm like, this is like fantastic human being and I am so thrilled that my daughter is listening to her music yeah that makes me really and I've heard she's always been like that because when I lived in Nashville and she was just coming up she used to do things like donate huge amounts to the library and a lot of things for the city of Nashville which I believe she still does because she used to live there full time um so she's kind of always been that way which is amazing you can just tell that her soul is good. And Emily Radajkowski, or is that how you say her name? Rad- Rad- Radajkowski? Yeah. I don't like know. That. I'm Rada. Was saying that like she was not a fan. And then she went to her concert and became completely obsessed. And she was like, honestly, if you don't like her, like you're kind of unintelligent. <laughs> 
I feel that. She's like a magical human. Oh, my God. That's, right. that's who Ocean's going to be. Taylor Swift? Yes. You're telling me my <laughs> daughter that I created in my stomach is going to be a Taylor Swift? 1,000%. I did tell my mom. I was like, by the way, the moment that Ocean can start, because Ocean can carry a tune. I know. She definitely can. When she can actually speak. Singing lessons, piano, violin, you're going to be a star, baby. <laughs> you're going to be a star. You're going to be everything I wanted to be and never became. <laughs> You, we've got a stage mom over here. One thousand percent. And Chris Jenner. We love it. Yes, minus the sex tape. Oh, okay, good. That I will not stand for. <laughs> I refuse. Refuse. <laughs> minus the sex oh, minus tape. The sex tape. Good. Um, yeah, Ocean's gonna be Taylor Swift. That's been established. <laughs> Whoa. I am taking her to the Pink concert though. She's been watching. She loves Pink from the time she was a ch like a child, <laughs> literally seven months old. Yeah. Pink got us through a lot. She loves Rocket Man. But Pink, I'm taking her on October 5th to the concert. I think I need to get those little earmuffs, maybe. The big ones. They're so cute. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Pink, I highly doubt you listen to this. But if you do, I am begging you to please perform um, cover me in sunshine because I don't think anyone understands what that song did for my kid, me and my mother. When we left the house almost two years ago, really had nothing. I was rebuilding. And that song we listened to with Ocean every single morning. And it's basically about how the world has been spinning forever. All is good. It's going to be okay. Like, it was the anthem. We started our day with that song every morning. You know, Jess, you, you know. appeared and we're dancing in front of the TV. Me and my mom sobbing our eyes out. And Ocean, that was really the first song that she listened to where she was introduced to music. Over and over, I have goosebumps because that was such a beautiful time. And she would, like, I mean, Dance. little bean, like... Mm -hmm. Too small to be dancing. How is she dancing and right so now? And so bald. And so bald. And I have so many cute videos. We'll go through them of you and her and her just biggest smile on her face, bald head, dancing away to that song, to yeah, that the pink song. The first like little tune that she sang was in that song that na na na. Yes. Or la 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 or something like that. La la. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. So I'm very excited to start like really introducing her to performances, like not just the music videos. Pink is going to be her first concert. I'm like, wow, you a cool kid. She's right? a cool kid. And yeah. it makes total sense that she would be obsessed with Pink because she's such a badass. Mm -hmm. My daughter for so long, I was like, I'm not having a boy. I cannot have a boy. It seemed like after I had Ocean, I'm like, they seem very chaotic and just like a lot. I look over the other day. Ocean is with Summer Moon. Summer Moon's standing there being the little sweet pea that she is. Not that Ocean's not, but she's the little daredevil. Ocean is grabbing her play chairs and putting them together by the ball pit for them to jump in. She tried head <laughs> first. I was like, a no, no, <laughs> no, no. Jumping into the ball pit off of these chairs. Like, what are you doing? At two and a half, being like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab those chairs, give us in some... Give us some <laughs> leveled upness to get us really down into this sh most shallow ball pit in the world. No, she is such a daredevil. When I was babysitting her that one night, she in the living room moved. I didn't allow her to do this, but I'm sitting there watching her and she moves the ottoman. Lala has like a couch. She moves the ottoman out of the way, starts stacking up the pillows so she could jump in. And it just without asking, she's she's building. She's and I'm like, what are you doing, babe? And she's just stacking up the pillows and then hops up on the couch, gets ready to jump. And I was like, whoa, OK, let's. And I let her do a couple like guided jumps. But I'm like, damn, I wouldn't even do that. Well, at least she's preparing me that if my next kid is a boy, I kind of know the drill. Yeah. Right. We are finally filming Vanderpump Rules. And that means my schedule is absolutely crazy. And the last thing I have time to do is cook. That is why I am obsessed with Factor Meals being at my house. Factor is America's number one meal kit, and they deliver wholesome, convenient meals right to my door. It saves me so much time and ensures that we're all eating well. There's no prepping, chopping, cooking, or even cleanup with Factor Meals. 
They're fresh, never frozen, and only take two minutes to heat up. Factor offers over 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, and they even offer gourmet plus options too. The feature premium ingredients like leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. And this is one of my new favorite Factor offerings lunch to go. These are ready to eat, no microwave needed. They have grain bowls, salad toppers. You can throw them in your bag and eat them when you're ready. That's why we all love the Factor smoothies too. Get the banana strawberry. It is absolutely delicious. Factor has calorie smart meals with around 550 calories per serving and protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. And they have keto and vegan plus veggie choices. So get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Go to factormeals.com slash lala50 and use code lala50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code lala50 at factormeals.com slash lala50 for 50% off your first box. Give Them Lala is sponsored by AG1, the daily foundation nutrition supplement that helps support whole body health. I just started taking AG1. I drink it every day, usually first thing in the morning. I wanted something that would help my energy and my overall health, and I didn't want to take handfuls of vitamins and pills to do that. AG1 is a powder. I mix a scoop of it in my water, and I just drink it. I'm not going to lie. I was worried about the taste, but let me tell you, it's actually very good. It's not chalky, and it doesn't have a weird aftertaste, which always freaks me out. I was surprised how good it is, and I'm honestly already feeling the benefits. I have so much more energy And I'm not completely wiped out after a long day of filming. I love that. Like I said, I put one scoop in water every day, and that one scoop gives me 75 minerals, vitamins, and probiotics. So I can't wait to see what this does for my skin, my hair, my nails. It's going to be amazing. AG1 also has these single-serving packets, which I can just toss in my bag and take with me when I travel to Palm Springs or anywhere else I go. It's very convenient and easy. Self-care is important, and this is just one way to treat yourself and your body well. I know you'll be obsessed with AG1. I am already, just from the energy boost I'm getting. So if you want help taking ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. You know how much I love free. Go to drinkag1.com slash lala. That's drinkag1.com slash lala. Check it out today. One funny Lisa story before we dive into reality TV. Love it. We need a Lisa story. So I was telling my mom, like, I'm warming up to dating and how I want to go about it. And, like, I think I'm going to do Bumble. And we're just having this conversation. She's like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's so great to hear you talk about wanting to possibly date again. And she was, like, asking me, like, why would you choose Bumble? Like, don't you meet guys like in the dm and i'm like that don't work out that work out with a quick hit sometimes not even an orgasm <laughs> like a buzz kill all the way around you sometimes know? a 40 second event sometimes you get mr 45 <laughs> mr 45 uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> no i refuse so i'm telling her about bumble i'm like i just like it i feel like i'm gonna be safe on it like safety is a priority on bumble I love that it's female driven, that I, you know, kind of wear the pants. That feels natural to me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, would you ever want to sign up for Bumble? And she was like, I mean, it sounds like a lot of fun, maybe, but I just feel like I'd be bombarded. <laughs> Lisa's worried that she's going to be bombarded by all these men. And let me tell you, that is a good worry because she would be bombarded. She facts, especially if she put. Her real age? Are you kidding me? I know. People would be like, first off, she's lying. She's saying she's older than she is. Second, who is this queen of a woman? And mm-hmm. and I will wine and dine her. I know. All the live long day. You're right. She could be bombarded on Bumble. Would you be okay with that? I think I could warm up to the idea. Okay. I think I need to pray about it, actually. Let pray me, about it. Yeah, let me pray <laughs> about it. Um. Okay, so I want to dive right in. First of all, let's talk about this. I was on, my mom loves to show me depressing things on the gram. I don't know why, it's but her most favorite thing to do. So she's showing me that at Westfield Mall in Century City, the Gucci store got robbed. Heard that. It was insane. Like, watching, and so many people were like, why is no one doing anything? It's like, why do you think? There's a, many things that could go wrong if you try to, like, save a bag. 
Who cares? They wiped them out, though. Did you see the store? I did, and I heard this. I heard this a couple years ago. But if you're ever watching a robbery of like jewelry, goods, anything, the last thing. This sounds so like duh, but the last thing you ever want to do is try and stop them. No, you- let them go. Let them go. Could you imagine? They they could have weapons on them. Like, let them go. Anyway, yes. then she shows me another, another robbery story. There's this place. It sounded like it was in Northern California. There was a robbery at Heller Jewelers. They took over $1 million of jewelry. They took a Rolex that had a tracking device in it and ended up catching these fools. Okay? So then it got me to thinking. Designers, like bags, clothing, any of these designer stores, they should put tracking devices that are removed after the purchase in all the bags. And if you try to remove them, it completely ruins the bag. I love that idea. And I don't know why these these items are so expensive. They're luxury items. Why wouldn't it's not like, you know, it's going to be cost nothing compared to what the item costs to put the tracking device in. Right. So hmm. I was thinking, why don't they do that? Like implanted into the bag. I don't know. Just a thought. Gucci. You should have done that. <laughs> should have had that. All of that, yeah. There's something about watching people like steal shit that makes me very uneasy. Pisses me off. I'm like, I don't like this. What are we doing? No. Have you ever stolen anything, Jess? Accidentally stole a lollipop. I was six. Oh, we I got talked grounded. about this. Yeah, yeah. your parents like, you- scolded you. Yeah. I just took it. I mean, I was like, uh. um, how about you? We um, talked about this, but didn't feel you like steal did- something on purpose? Or no, <laughs> like when you were little. <laughs> Why do I remember? Like, I feel like I may have talked about. I took like a a choker that I. It was not. It was I was modeling. Okay, and they had this as one of the looks, and I was like, "Damn, this is kind of cute." <laughs> and then I took it, and like literally the next day, all the jewels fell out. <laughs> That's what you get. Easton told his <laughs> robbery story. Yeah. He did. Women's earrings. Oh, women's earrings. It was banned from <laughs> Fashion Place Mall. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go into Real Housewives of Orange County. So not much happened. Okay. Have yeah. you been watching OC, Jess? Okay, you guys, I want to say not OC, but last night I was laying my head down on my pillow. I was comfy. And then I popped open and I said, Real Housewives of New York. Oh, no. And I ran out in my living room and I turned it on. I what caught, time? I mean, I had a long weekend, so it was like 8.30 or 9. Oh, okay, I feel less <laughs> no, badly then. It wasn't like 1 a.m. I watched the set. It was live streaming, but I watched, or whatever, the, the half of New York episode four and then all of episode three. But let's talk about OC. Well, OC, it's fine that you didn't watch. Not much happened. I was hoping that at the beginning of so tonight will be a new episode so two weeks ago the tail end of the episode that we talked about was i hope that shannon bedores like whatever was said that heather repeated yes. is talked about was it no oh. it wasn't but shannon kept saying he's very very private and like this will ruin everything they they still didn't say what heather repeated but obviously Shannon was very shook up about it. And like, I don't know how I feel about people dating reality TV personalities when they want their business more private. Okay, that's interesting. I just feel like if I sit here and I'm like, I hate sports. I cannot stand them. I wouldn't go like find an athlete. Really? Or if I was like, I hate talking about finances like I wouldn't go find someone who's in finance like do you get what I'm saying I get what you're saying but on the opposite end would you want to date someone who's like I love Bravo and reality TV well that's why I wanted to get your opinion because that actually scares me that's then if I if I date someone who's like yeah I would film it's like why yeah no why are you so into and same with sports of course I don't know if I'm I'm not a sports guy but I might not want to date or be with someone who's like that sports chick who's like at all the games and obsessed because I'd be like, oh, you're, I don't know. You wow, know. you just made way more sense. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's a spectrum. You don't want to date on either end. You don't want to date the obsessed, but also the hate. You don't want to date someone who's like, oh, reality TV, disgusting. You'd be like, okay, it's my job. It's my job and I'm yeah. offended because it's awesome. Awesome. 
Okay, no, yeah. you just made all the sense. I think what's hard is you have to find the person to vent to who's not on the show with you. And I always say I feel like that's why Vanderpump is different than most shows. Is there are many conversations that all of us have had that we just know real life works this way, right? Like, I'm not going to go out and repeat every single thing that someone tells me. There are things that are meant to stay just between two people, right? Right. These are your thoughts. And if you choose one day to share them, then like that's on you. But I'm certainly not going to go and like ruin a friendship or, you know, put you on blast when I know you're telling me this in confidence. And I know that every like all the viewers are probably like, no, that's so boring. But at the end of the day, nothing lasts forever. And I would like to know that my friendships will. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest mistake was you don't tell your deepest, darkest secrets or, you know, vent about your relationship to someone who's on the show with you. Yeah. Especially housewives. Mm -hmm. Because here we are. It's been repeated. But why has it not been talked about yet? Are we ever going to know what it is that's so bad? Do you think? I mean, reunion, come reunion time, surely. But do you think we'll have to wait? I think we may have to wait. Really? Yeah. Or it'll come out further. We're halfway through the season. So that happened or I guess didn't happen. Again, not much happened this this episode. Jen and Ryan came face to face with Eddie and Tamara. They talked about the dick pic yeah. and the cheating on Ryan's end. All is good for now. I will say there's something about Ryan's eyes that I do not like. Mm. They seem a little dark. And you know what I've learned? Hmm. When you're talking to someone, you have to look at what their pupils do because I was listening to this um, behavior specialist. She works strictly with like narcissism. And when the pupil dilates, it means that they're in. It's almost like an animal who's going in for the kill. You know, they get like really big. So like if a, if you're looking at your partner and you're talking about something like where you want truth to come out of it and their pupils start doing something funky, just be aware of that because it means they're in they're going into fight mode. Oh my god, I've never heard that before in my life. Yeah. Wow, cuz I've I've talked to like women or met new women and talked about certain stuff or had deep conversations and all of a sudden I'm like what is going on with their pupils? Like what are their eyes doing? Yeah. Yeah, no, it gets really scary. He just, he has some eyes that I feel like I've seen before. Uh Uh-oh. I've seen them with other men on reality television who have turned out to be not great guys. So just like be aware of that. You know, I'm not wounded or scarred. Hey, I'm telling you to look out for some pupils. You call it though. The second you call something, I go, okay, I better listen because. Wait, really? Yes. Learning from experience. Are you kidding me? In the over two years that I've worked for you. You call something and then it happens or your gut or you go, I should have listened to my gut. My gut was telling me this. You've got intuition like your mom. Yeah, but can I tell you where the the fine line is? Is having your experience define you and have it be the end all be all in every situation. And I think that's what I'm really, really trying to work on is I don't want to go out into the world and have my experience define how I interact with everybody. I don't want I don't want one little thing in someone to go. This reminds me of this. I don't want to be triggered all the time. Yeah, but it is hard. I also don't want to be stupid. You know, if you just like ignore your experiences and if you see parallels to be like, no, I don't want I'm not wounded. I'm I'm going to ignore this. Then you cross over to being stupid. It is a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. It's another fine line because we're all, all life is, is us reacting from past experiences, whether it's good or bad or learn, like we're living and just living from past experiences. That's like learning. That's history. Hopefully doesn't repeat itself. If it's negative, that's all kind of life is. So it is a fine line. I get it. But you're also, I mean, a lot has happened for you in the past two years. Yeah. So you're just processing everyone processes different things at a different speed I get what you're saying and maybe you're at the point now where you're like okay I've processed I've kind of let some of it out I've gone maybe a little too far this way so now I'm going to reel it back and actually take a beat and think about these things yeah I don't know I also think like when it comes to all of the women on OC having stories about Ryan 
And I get it. Like Jen wants to protect him. She loves him. Love kind of blinds you as cheesy as that sounds when they they say like love is blind. It absolutely is. It's like blind. It's death. It's all of the things that where like you literally don't see reality for what it is. So I get where she's at. But I just think like where there's smoke, there is fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of how I feel about Lizzo right now. (gasps) Tell me your feelings on Lizzo because I was catching up on TikTok. All the stories and they aren't looking great. Well, we'll take a little, let's yeah. sidetrack for a moment. Okay. Never liked Lizzo. I feel like I can find, I never ever said that to anybody because I feel like people would clutch their pearls and be like, you don't like Lizzo. I never liked her. I didn't like her music. There was just nothing about her that like drew me to her as an artist. Um, And so when I saw all of this stuff come out, I immediately thought to myself, where there's smoke, there is fire. People don't just say things like this. Right? Yeah. So a lot of people have said, obviously, she's under a tremendous amount of fire right now. But people have said it's her management team that's to blame. That is such a crock of shit. It would be like me, Jess, and my team or whatever, the team that I have, and you coming to me or something and saying, like, they did X, Y, and Z. I would never let it slide. Right. They'd be done. Like, I run shit here. Exactly. Right? Yes. Like Lizzo, you, you're the boss. Yeah. What you say goes. So you can't blame it on management because you're in charge of all of that. Yes. And surely you've heard, let's say worst case scenario, her management was monster, were monsters behind the scene. It doesn't go. It's not like she would never know or never you hear about those things. Well, and I also think that as the artist and yes, I I can only imagine how busy you are, but I imagine that Taylor Swift's dancers feel comfortable enough to come up to her and say when they're uncomfortable, it's your job to create a positive work environment for everybody who is in your camp, right? Mm -hmm. The job is already stressful enough. There's hundreds of millions of dollars that are at stake and people putting money into you, your tours, your performances, whatever it may be. There's no reason why your backup dancers, who are literally on stage with you, couldn't feel comfortable enough to come up to you for two minutes and tell you, like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, Johnny is making me do X, Y, and Z, and I feel extremely uncomfortable. You call the meeting, you say, Johnny, this is fucked up, you gotta go. Yeah. I mean, I'm on the opposite end of you as far as liking her. I loved Lizzo. Really? I did. I loved her. I thought she was just a bad bitch. So confident. I was like, yes. Loved all of that. I just loved, loved all yes. of that. And I loved her music and I loved all of it. So the second the first story came out and it started getting traction, I was so disappointed because I was like, this is going somewhere. Like, this isn't just a one off, like one story too. like this is going somewhere. And that's super disappointing because I've always loved her. How do you feel now? I mean, I'm st- I'm keeping up with the stories, but it's just disappointing. I'm just disappointed. You, the, all you have, one of the main things you have is how you treat people in life and how you interact with people. Like, that is, we're all humans. Well, once you're, like, done on this planet, no one sits there and they're like, that person was so rich. Right? Exactly. They'll talk about your music, but really it's about, like, how they were as people. Mm-hmm. At least that's... My what I've experienced when I, you know, am talking to friends or when someone passes who was like an icon, you know, it's about the art and how they were as people. How is she going to get rid of this? Like This is going to be on her forever. How is she going to come back from it? How is she going to? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a shame. It's really disappointing. Do you think she really body shamed someone? I mean, I don't know. I don't know any of it. I want to do it. My my initial thought is believe these people because, yeah, it's probably extremely hard to come out and be like, yeah, you know, I was so excited to work for this who I thought was an icon and this boss. And then this is how she treated me. It's embarrassing. Nobody wants to come out and say that. I love that you said that because it takes a tremendous amount of courage for someone to come forward on someone as high level as Lizzo and share their story. Especially because you have the people who are diehard saying, well, like, what did you do? Yes. Then your past is looked into and all of these things, anything they can use to discredit you and your truth 
is what they're going to use. Like, it's not an easy spot to be in. No, and it shouldn't be embarrassing. But I'm just saying I get if some people feel that way. I was watching a TikTok about a girl who said that. She was like, I was embarrassed because I looked up to this woman and this is how it was treated. So, oh, my hell. Yeah, that's a bummer. Well, thank God I didn't have to go in and delete any of her music because I don't even have any on my phone. <laughs> I do not like her music. <laughs> the only song I have on my phone is... Yeah. Yes. That's it. The rest of them, I'm like, please turn it off. It was like a summer vibe for me last summer. Oh, no. Oh, no. So was it a horrendous summer for you then? (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of your first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you earned. Doubled. All the cash back from eating at your favorite soup dumpling restaurant, doubled. All the cash back from that trip where you sort of learned how to snowboard, also doubled. And the best part, you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it. Nope, Discover does it automatically. Seriously though, see the terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com slash match. My legs feel so smooth and your legs can feel that smooth too if you get an Athena Club Razor. You will be obsessed just like I am. The water-activated serum on Athena's Club Razors means zero razor bumps on my skin and no gunky buildup on the blades. The serum also has shea butter in it. Your skin is going to love that. Athena Club Razors are super cute and come in so many different colors. There's coral pink, sky blue, rose, midnight blue, and one in all black. I've obviously got the all white because you know how much I love a clean, crisp look. And with Athena Club, you never have to think about blade refills because you choose how often you want your replacement blades shipped to you. And you can even find them in Target stores nationwide. You can pick up new blades whenever you need one. The best part? The Athena Club Razor Kit is only $10 and comes with two blade heads, a magnetic hook for the shower, and your choice of handle color. I love the shower hook because I can store the razor super high and out of ocean's reach. So switch to the better razor and show your skin that you care with Athena Club. Get started today by shopping in-store at Target Stores Nationwide. Just head to the shaving aisle to find the razor kit, cloud shave foam, wax strips, and razor refills. Your skin is going to thank you. Okay, Roni. Roni. A little bit heavy. A A little little bit of a heavy episode. Yes. Yes. I love these women. Are they not great? Especially last night when I really, I watched the the half is, uh, episode four and then three. I love these women. I love them so much. I like, love I could Brynn. I could watch them. Bryn, can we give her pink moment in her interview look? Yes. I mean, the makeup was flawless. The, the dress was like sexy but chic. Hair was on point. It was so good. So good. And I feel like, the, they were like born to do this. Like it doesn't, when I first watched Real Housewives of Salt Lake, their first season, I was like, okay, this is going to be a minute before they ease into the fact that there's cameras watching them. Mm-hmm. With Roni, not at all. It's like season four energy. It, the, it, it yeah. totally is. They just all seem comfortable. They And I don't think, it, who did we talk about last week? And they're like, some people are thinking she's producing herself. In this Brent. episode, I didn't see that. No. Not at all. She was, I loved her story. Yes. This episode. Yes. Like when she goes in to get her hair done and talks about how it was like, she goes and does this once a week. There's a lot of hair. And then she talks about how, you know, her her mother is white. Her father is black. Her grandmother, who's white, raised her. And her grandmother had a friend who was a black woman and gave Bryn's grandmother this salon to take Bryn to to get her hair done and Bryn talks about how that was the first time that she was able to like see these like strong black women her community that she really didn't get to be part of because of just the way her family you know the grandmother taking over and she's like she talks about how her grandmother doesn't even realize the impact that that had on her life I know. I got like choked up about it. Yeah. No, it was beautiful. And she, she's just such a, a gracious, beautiful human. Well, with everything she's, she had gone through, like she really opened up. It was so 
It's really interesting. So if you watch her talk to her friends, so they do a Brins, Brins Brins giving, giving, yeah. right? And to watch her open up to her group of friends about what she went through as a child and like diapers going unchanged and her being left behind and people not checking on her for days on end. And she was only six months old. And then she's in her interview and the producer is asking to like talk about it. And she literally cannot. And they're like today. And she's like, not ever. She's clearly deeply affected by it. And I truly cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how the two people, your mom and your dad, are supposed to be the ones to protect you and love you unconditionally. And, you know, on this podcast, like last week, we were talking about Santa Claus, right? And a lot of people thought it was very funny, right? This podcast is for adults. We're here to just like have fun, laugh. But being a parent is such an honor. It is most certainly not a right. You don't just get to be one, right? right? Yeah. So when I had Ocean and kind of my view of the world, and yes, I sit here and I'm like, Santa's not taking credit for gifts. Santa will absolutely be around anything that is magical and allows my child to have imagination will most certainly be in the home. So when you hear about parents who treat it like it's just like such a, like being a parent is like such a, like a right and it's, it's whatever. And granted, you, you have to assume that Bryn's parents were sick. Well, the, especially there the way was some, it, I'm sure they struggled with addiction. Yeah. And like she said, they, she said they didn't love me. And then she said they couldn't. They because couldn't. She's obviously processing. It's maybe wasn't a choice on their end as much as maybe some others. Like you said, maybe they were sick or. Right. Yeah. I'm sure there's many reasons that she may talk about and her feelings towards it that we will never know. But to to hear someone like Bryn talk about her past and then to see just what a a beautiful human she is today is like pretty inspiring. Mm-hmm. You know, I've I've had the luxury of meeting her. She's friends with Pandora, so we've crossed paths. But she just seems to, like, really love life. That's what it, the gracious, that's what I was looking for. Like, appreciate and love life. Like, her right. energy, there's something about her that I feel like you could be around her and you're just, you feel like a better person. Right. Yeah. Like, she's the one that makes the party. A hundred percent. She's the one that's always invited. And if she can't come, it's like, oh, Kind of a bummer. Yeah. Like, you miss her. Yes. I liked this episode and the way that they edited it because they also showed Uba talking to someone who's kind of like a mentor to her. She has Uba Hot, which is a hot sauce. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to figure out, you know, where to go from here. And she feels alone. And her mentor says, you know, you have a lot of friends who really love you. And she's like, but it's not my mom. That was like taking a bullet because I can relate to that where no matter what you feel and how great your friends are. I'm surrounded by many great people. But the day that my mom is no longer around, like, I will be lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I don't have tissue. No, we don't need (laughs) tissue. I'm going to suck it up. No, it was just like, it was a beautiful Roni episode, but it was like heavy kind of. Yeah. Yeah. What is happening right now? This is Give Them All a Podcast. It's a, it's so why a happy, are we crying? No, this is, this is beautiful. But I like the way that they edited it because it made, there were two stories happening at once. Bryn, who had the lack of that mom and dad support, and Uba, who so desperately misses it. Um, and I just thought it was like a really beautiful episode. We really saw these women in a different light. And sometimes they're, you know, all of these shows have different production companies. But I do love it when the production company hones in on on the struggles Mm -hmm. and like the background of why people are the way they are. And it's not it doesn't always have to be some giant explosive fight. Yeah. You know, the scenes of people talking about their heartache and what they missed out on as kids is just as interesting. Just as interesting, if not more. It makes that human we're watching more dynamic on screen. It's like, oh, yeah, of course. And also with you getting emotional about it, let's, you know, be honest. It's like, you know how you've lost a parent. Right. So you can apply the feeling and then even just thinking about your mom like, you, I, I can't, can't even, even go, go there. there. So, of course, you're going to feel that way. I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine losing a parent, let alone two. So with Uba and her mom, like, of course you know how that feels. 
Yeah, she was just so sweet and raw about it. I like yeah. really, really enjoy watching uh, these group of women. Me too. I love her too. She's one of my favorites. Yeah. I loved when, so last week, we'll get to a lighter note. I'm sorry. I don't know what just happened. Do you not guys. apologize for that. <laughs> Connecting, um, yeah, we're connecting. So they're in Roni. They're finally back mm-hmm. in uh, the city after going to the Hamptons, and apparently Jessel refers to um, Aaron, Bryn, and Uba as cackling hags. Okay, I can't. <laughs> no, Uba being like, what was what she? Is a, <laughs> what is a cackling hag? Watching her not understand what it was because it's like, really, what is it? Because I wouldn't use a cackling hags to describe any of those women. No. So I was also a little confused. But watching her be so, and then like looking it up, Googling what it means. It. <laughs> I was like, that's so rude. And I love what this, I don't know if she said this during that moment, but she's like, I'm watching a French film. I don't understand I'm what's going on. French she's film. like, <laughs> that's just so amazing. Uba with the coconut milk that she oh. found at the restaurant la- in last week's episode or two weeks ago and wanting it because it's really hard to find and her obsession with provisions. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to do anything but just like put her around the kitchen yes. and like, talk about provisions and like <laughs> how caviar is not enough for a meal. It most certainly is. I used to go to Beverly Hills Hotel on the reg. For caviar and champagne. That sounds so good with the little potato things. Oh, my gosh. The bl- a, Whatever they're called. Ugh. It's enough for every meal. But, yes, I, it was... The episode was so good. And so good. It, they left us... They left us at the moment where it said to be continued, where Bryn is going to, like, I guess, really open up about... the. All of the women were visibly upset mm-hmm. about what she was saying. Yep. The second you hear a six-month-old is being left with an unchanged diaper, it's like, what is going on? And then it takes you to a place where, like, you have these these men and women who are in partnerships and they want to have families and it's such a struggle to have a baby. And you're like, make it make sense. Yeah. Make it, it make sense. Right. And then you have parents out there who are, it's like, you know, why do you even have children if you're not going to care for them or love them? Yeah. it's Being a parent is the funnest thing on the face of the earth. I'm excited to be a parent one day. You're going to be a parent one day. I want 500 children. Fingers crossed you talking about this sibling for Ocean. I cannot wait to care for a pregnant Lala. You know it's happening, Jess. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. God willing. You're right. Because again, I got pregnant with Ocean when I was like, what, 29? Yes. I mean, I'm going to be 33. You never know what changes in the bod. But I'm really, really freaking excited. So there's that. I cried on this episode. What the hell was that? That was very strange. I loved it because we used to you used to do that a lot. There used to be at least one tear per episode. I know. And but now I'm feeling really vulnerable because my friends are here. Right. You know, like they're seeing it happen. And I think I know you feel vulnerable. I think it's beautiful. I'm so because you just connect with that Lala. We just talked about it. Me and Easton and you on this episode. It's like the vulnerable Lala. Everyone needs to connect with her. So then you guys should consider yourselves lucky. (laughs) We're connected as fuck. (laughs) All right, Jessica, I want to hear. We're at, it's it's that time. I want to hear what is the ache of the week and then what is your relief? I'm literally sweating. My heart is racing. Okay. Can't believe I'm going to talk about this on the podcast. I'll start with the relief because it makes the ache that much more painful. The relief was, it was my birthday on Saturday, August 5th. My friends, my relief is that my friends, Nick and Joe, Nick Berry, Joe Schmelzer, Schmelzer, are just the most amazing two guys ever. They opened up their home for me to have a little birthday party. They, Nick or Joe was up at like 5 a.m. making guacamole. Like they just, they, the house was gorgeous. They, they just are amazing. And that's what they did for me. And um, Joe missed out on Taylor Swift that night. Oh, he had wow. Third he row. You. Third what? row. Third row with Nick. And and people were staying later. And he wanted to, like, make sure the party didn't have to end. So he didn't go to Taylor. And it was supposed to be, like, one to, like, five. And he was like, no, no, no. They're just the best. So that's oh. my relief. I'm obsessed with them. I love them so much. My ache okay. is that... 
we had tacos and margs, right? So it's, I drank a um, decent amount, but all day I was good. Like I felt good. We were in the pool. And then at, at one point in time, I remember this, blackout. No, it was like lights out just randomly. Not only that, lights out. He, everyone's in the pool. And I just remember taking a last sip of my margarita and I could, I could taste the like watermelon juice and tequila go down. And all I remember is like feeling like I got to take a nap on the pool and I'm laying on the ledge of the pool. And then without even thinking, just throw up in the pool. No, I did. I, oh my Where God. people were swimming. Where people were swimming right in front of them. <laughs> oh, right in front of them. That's... And it was like, I spit up my drink and it was like my drink. So thank God awful that I didn't eat all day because we started so early drinking but but also it wasn't like chunky or anything it was just the watermelon juice but threw up it's floating, floating. in the pool oh my god everyone's going like up. no it was disgusting humiliating everyone's like oh my god oh my god Kyle like picks me up he's like we're going upstairs just so I could like be in front of the bathroom this is in Nick and Joe's pool they're pissed and, that and they miss Taylor Swift for your they drunk miss ass Taylor. and then I have all these people and the friends there were like some first timers that I was hanging out with. Hold on, did they all go like this? Ew! No, they were all so nice. Nobody got out of the pool. Are you joking? I'm you t- were all twisted. Lala, I'm talking two people from our office building were there. Shut The first time I ever hung out with Loon? them. Loon? Loon? Oh no. I Loon? <laughs> And they saw me like I texted everyone the next day. I'm like, I n- I have not been that way since high school. I'm not kidding. They're like, we're that way every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we're constantly throwing up in pools. And then the rest of the night, I'm just in the bathroom getting sick. And like everyone ended up leaving, texting me the next day. What happened with Jake and Amy? The oh, parents. Oh, my God. There are this. This has only happened four times in my life where I have to call Jake and Amy because number one, Jake puts me in check. And number two, Amy makes me feel better about everything. She's like, you're fine. Everyone does it. It's a mistake. So I wake up at Nick and Joe's house with Kyle on the bathroom floor with Kyle next to me at 4.30 a.m. And I'm like, oh my God, what happened? I call. I was like, I have to call my mom and dad. I call my mom and dad and they did it. My dad put me in check. He's like, you're 32. Like you should have known. And, and, Like, oh, Jake wasn't messing around. No, he was like, come on, Jess. And then my mom was like, sweetie, everyone does it. It was your birthday. And thank God you didn't get hurt. Like, so I got that and I just needed that. Kyle. Oh, Kyle. You needed some structure. I needed some structure. Kyle took care. That was another, of course, took help, took care of the party, slept on the floor with me, got me up the next day. He was like, you're good. Like, you had a fun time. I was just. Marry that man. I don't know. He's he's like. A godsend. He's the best. So I don't know. I kind of feel like it was your birthday. Throw up in a couple pools. Whatever. <laughs> you know? I told them because we're going, Kyle and I are going to Hawaii with Nick and Joe. And I was like, um, I'm coming too. I which. know. And Lala's coming. But I was like, I promise I don't get this way. And they're like, it's fine. You're fine. We can only hope you do at least once. I can't believe I told that. Okay. Uh, let's hear <laughs> your ache and relief so we can move on. I'm thrilled for you. Thank you. You deserve that. You work real, real hard, honey. You (laughs) deserved that moment. Um, Okay, I'm going to read this because this is my ache of the week. Marine Land Antibes in France plans to export their orcas to another marine park. It has been confirmed. Okay, so everyone knows I love my orcas, right? I'm empty the tanks, send them to seaside sanctuaries. It is beyond me how people can still go and support these types of amusement parks. Okay, so rumors were circulating in May that these orcas were going to be transferred to Suma Sea World Park in Japan in 2024. Now, these orcas have never been separated, okay? They're family. And everyone knows that orca pods are together until death. They do not separate. They have a part of the brain that processes emotion on a a more intelligent level than humans. Okay? Mm -hmm. They will now be separated. It makes me sick to my stomach. Um, They will be of very high value, some of them, because of breeding purposes, which then just makes it so more orcas are going to be in captivity. One of the male orcas is sick often and has behavioral issues. Now, this means like a lot of um, oral infection. 
And this is because orcas are not supposed to be kept in tanks. So they start self-destructing. They get very violent towards people we've seen. If you've seen blackfish, they ram themselves into the concrete. They chew on metal. It's absolutely devastating. And I know this is another heavy topic, but the tank that they've been in is 11 million gallons. It's the largest tank in the world. Wherever they're moved will be much, much smaller. Now, these orcas are a part, orcas are a part of the dolphin family. Highly intelligent. They swim hundreds of miles a day. Each pod has their own hunting technique. No one pod is the same. Um, so if you guys give a damn, let's stop supporting these places, no matter where you go, whether you're in France, Japan, stop going. It's not cool. Get educated. I'm over it. Don't want to see stories like this anymore. My relief of the week on a lighter note is the fact that the podcast on YouTube is absolutely killing it. And I want to thank you guys so much. Episodes on YouTube of the podcast come out on Fridays. So make sure I know you guys are listening to this on a Wednesday, but just know you'll be able to see it on Friday. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you bump gums in the comments section. Give us tips. Tell us you love us. Tell us what we could work on. I want to hear it all. Try to save the hate, though, if it's not constructive. I'm not trying to see it. This is a place of love and support and fun. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for showing just all the love in the world. Sometimes I wonder. I'm like, for me? (laughs) Of course for me. I want to shout out really quick the TikTok channel. We now have a Give Them Lala podcast TikTok and Instagram, give them Lala Pod. But all the clips that you're mentioning are on those pages. Yes. And because you you linked the podcast page on Instagram to TikTok, Mm -hmm. the podcast IG has changed, y'all. So it's give them Lala Pod. Um, You can go there and see little clips and all of that goodness. You can, again, purchase tickets to my live show on October 18th at the Irvine Improv. Yes. Am I saying everything correctly? Yes, you are. All right, there it is. I hope you guys have a wonderful hump day. We hit all the notes today. Lucky us. I hope we. I hope it was a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> it, sh- it was for me. These are what my happy endings look like these days. Oh, um, no. I love y'all. Have the best rest of the week, and I will catch you next week. <laughs>